we've scoured the internet to bring you the ultimate in life hacks, bonkers inventions and crazy contraptions designed to make your life easier, more exciting and definitely more fun. And we've summoned a team of experts with science brains and funny bones to explain everything. From the ridiculous to the sublime. And make sure you strap in for the grand finale at our very own Hack HQ, where we create and construct an epic stunt, our very own super-sized solutions to life's problems, big and small. With the help of Mike Sansom, pyrotechnician, chemist and engineer, and his human guinea pigs, Marcus Bronzy and Stephen Grant. For now, sit back, relax and put your feet up. Let us do the hard work so you don't have to. This is how hacks work. This time we're taking a leisurely look at the fascinating world of hobbies. Since the dawn of time, we've always tried to entertain ourselves in the most fun ways imaginable. It is really important to do something that you don't get paid for, which you love. Hobbies are as wide-ranging as people on the planet. And so, coming up, we've got some videos to take them to the next level. From sewer fishing... ..to making music without an instrument in sight. And in the workshop, we'll be getting ready to show any paintball enthusiasts out there how to up the stakes on the battlefield, heroically demonstrated by our guinea pig, Stephen. Our first hobby will definitely cause a buzz. And solve that age-old problem, how can I transport all my bees without endangering the local public transport system? That's actually very dangerous. He's on a bike without a crash helmet. The reason this hack works is because these bees aren't actually attacking him, they're drawn to him like a magnet. Or a moth to a flame, or a bee to a flame. Do bees like fire? I'm confused. They're actually just trying to swarm around their queen, and their queen is the bee that's inside the pendant around the guy's neck. And they know where she is because of something called pheromones. These are smells that the queen is giving off that the bees can detect. In fact, bees are constantly communicating, especially when they're hunting for their favourite nectar. Special female bees, called worker bees, search high and wide for the best flowers and tell the other bees how to find them by dancing. It's called the waggle dance and works like this. First, she gathers an audience by vibrating her abdomen. Once all the bees are paying attention, she begins the dance. The duration of the waggle indicates distance to the nectar source. The longer the waggle, the further the flower. The angle she dances tells them the direction of the flower in relation to the sun. The dance can direct other bees to nectar over 15 kilometres away. This beekeeper is clearly dedicated to pursuing his hobby, even if it means harnessing the forces of nature itself. A hack hit! And now for a hobby which will definitely leave you feeling drained. Hot dog, strawberry flavour. I got some rope because my line kept breaking in the last one, so you know, I'll come back later and see what we catch. Strawberry flavour hot dog? Is that a thing? Looks like it, George. It's horrible. Luckily for this keen fisherman, though, he's not looking to snag any sewer-dwelling Georges. So what we have to realise in this video, it's not quite a sewer, it's a storm drain. And what storm drains do is they collect excess water coming from the roads, but also coming from nearby waterways. This may account for the impressive catch. Thank you, James. But there's still something fishy about how this person knew a strawberry-flavoured sausage was a catfish's favourite snack. For the discovery alone, it's a hit. And just in case you thought passing your time fishing could get a bit dull, our next clip shows a fresh take on this hobby which gets straight to the point. Well, it ain't pretty, but it'll work. I didn't even know bow fishing was a thing. Fishing reels are thought to have originated in China in the year 1195, but they didn't make it over to Europe until the 1600s. Like a watery Robin Hood, our hunter uses stealth 
guile and a fully loaded plastic bottle to stalk his prey. Fully loaded with the bluntest homemade arrows in the world by the looks of it. As if living as a brown trout in a swamp in Idaho wasn't unpleasant enough, now they have to contend with crazed plastic bottle wielding archers. I'm sure in his head this guy looks a lot cooler than he actually does. Although this definitely looks more satisfying than normal fishing, it looks far less effective, and those homemade arrows are definitely not hitting the target. A miss. If reaching for the stars sounds like it could be your favourite pastime, this clip will show you how to pursue this obsession without having to take out another mortgage. This hack is kind of like the realisation of a boyhood dream. Like, I've always wanted to make my own hot air balloon and go up into the sky. A mannequin flying over a field in Russia tied to a hot air balloon. I think you're eating too much sugar as a kid, Ali. Hot air balloons fly by decreasing the density of the air inside the bag. The low density air rises over the cold, denser air. Why has the pretend man being taken up in the hot air balloon, why has he got a bottle of cola and a straw. This hobby may be good at getting weird, scary mannequins airborne, but for any other flying objects in the area, it definitely has some strings attached. A miss. Coming up at Hack HQ, we'll be going from hot air to compressed air as we learn how paintball guns actually work. Ready for Mike and his human guinea pig Stephen to go head to head in our ultimate hobbies challenge. So far, we've shown you the beekeeper's answer to FedEx, how to fish your dinner from the drain, and how to follow your hobby into space. Now our clips are taking on a different note, musical notes to be precise. If being the next Jay-Z sounds like your cup of tea, but you don't have access to his ridiculously expensive studio, our next video shows any budding musicians out there that there is still a way to follow their passion. I like my piss. They're so comfy. My initial thought is it does seem a shame if the focus is on the trouser area that one of the sounds in there wasn't a. Well, one of them had to go there. He's making a song about his pants using his pants. That's quite good. Music made just with trousers, plus all that music, the musical instruments that he used as well for the music part. This guy's talent has legs. By layering separate sounds from his trousers, he stitched them together to make sweet, sweet music, proving there is definitely at least one way to have fun with your trousers on. Cause they're just pants. It's a number one hit. But if all of this feels a little below the belt and you still want to pursue your sweet sounding hobby on the fly, then this next clip is just for you, even if it is a bit tongue in cheek. Roll up, roll up, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Come see the incredible lizard boy. The human tongue is made up of eight different muscles and it's in a similar construction as an elephant's trunk or an octopus's tentacle. The problem with using your tongue is you've got a lot of saliva on it, which means you're actually covering a very large surface area on the phone. It's an option. I'll stick to using my hands. Boring. If you like playing with your phone, this is an absolute game changer. A hit! Everyone knows music can make money, but if your favourite hobby is record collecting, this clip proves money can also make music. I really like the way this hat combines the old and the new. The new polymer note versus the 70-year-old polyvinyl chloride record. Fantastic. I thought this hack was super interesting. I've only ever known vinyls to work using a really hard material like stainless steel or diamond. With the cost of records these days, it's a wonder this guy had any left over to play it with. Nevertheless, this is a money-grabbing, music-making hit. ones do, this next video shows you some great ideas on paper. Finally, the answer we've all been waiting for, how to cut through confectionery with a power tool and avoiding that nasty metal aftertaste. Hurrah! 
If you look at paper under a microscope, what you see is it's quite ridged and it's more like a saw. It's all about the momentum. Momentum equals mass times velocity. So it's that momentum that could cut the object. Finally, a power saw without the risk of horrific mutilation. A paper-thin hack hits. As long as you don't need to cut anything stronger than a small cola bottle. Over at Hack HQ, Mike is tinkering with paint and compressed air in preparation for our epic hack. That sounds fun for us, bad for guinea pig Stephen. Hi, Mike. You all right, Stephen? I'm excited about today. Persian mink, Tibetan sunset. We're going to get this workshop looking like the working environment you should be in. <laughs> it's all very beautiful, but today is less about your painting and more about paintballing, because it's our hobbies hack. Ah, paintballs. Right, so these are paintballs, These eh? are paintballs, yeah. So these are gelatin balls. They've got a capsule that bursts really easily when they hit you, and then they've got a paint that's water-based so it can wash off easily. And how do we fire them, then? Well, we fire them from a gun with compressed air. Oh, OK. So I'll show you compressed air here. Here's our paintball. Fire it along. <laughs> Boom! Off it goes. Ooh! Well, that was surprisingly powerful. So how does the gun work? So the gun works in exactly the same principle. You've got a compressed air canister inside the gun. You've got a hopper of paintballs. You cock the gun. The balls fall down into the barrel. When you pull the trigger, it releases a little mechanism that fires the ball out with the compressed air. Well, there's only one question left to ask them. When can I have a go? Well, let me show you first of all. Come round here, put your glasses on. Right, I cock it, the ball goes in, and then fire! Whoa! <laughs> Came out really quick. It's really quick. It's up to 300 kilometers an hour. That's as fast as the bullet train in Japan. That is really going to hurt. It is really going to hurt. And at close range, that can cause bruises and welts. Oh, great. Yeah. Well, for our epic hack, we've got to upscale it, haven't we? So I've upscaled our paintball gun massively. We've got 14 barrels of mayhem. It's going to fire all those paintballs at high pressure towards you at great velocity. It's completely over the top. It's you. But how are you going to get compressed air into this massive hole at the I'm end? I'm so pleased you asked. I've got my trusty CO2 fire extinguisher. This connects onto the back, the CO2 goes into the compression chamber, and all 14 barrels fire at the same time. OK. I can't help feeling I'm a bit of a disadvantage here. Totally. But so long as I get out of the way of that, I'm going to be OK? Yeah, I think so. Well, so long as it's just that, I know what to avoid. Yeah, I've got a couple of other things up my sleeve, though. Oh, great. Join us later on when we'll see just how big Mike's gun is and just how far Stephen can run. So all you hobbyists, you've learned how to make music with your clothes and your money and how to entertain yourself with your tongue. But if you're still after some more tips to help you on your way to hobby hack greatness, then look no further. If you're lucky enough to have more than one hobby but can't find the time for both, our next clip may hold the answer you've been waiting for. This kid is successfully pulling off nerdiness and sportiness at the same time. He is a genius. Rubik's Cubes are solved using algorithms. This is just a set of instructions that if you follow, you'll eventually get to the solution. So how do you solve a Rubik's Cube? Besides peeling off all the stickers, there is an actual science to it, apparently. It comes down to five not-so-straightforward steps. The simple first step, the hot cross bun, as we've decided to call it. Easy. Secondly, all you have to do is finish that cross to make it all white. Still with us? Thirdly, you need to solve the middle layer. Is this helpful? I'm just telling you what you need to do. No idea how to do it. Then fourth, solve the top face. No idea. Oh, yeah, this is really easy. Finally, if you've got this far about crying, you're nearly there. One final push. Come on, I believe in you. And if that is too much hassle for you, try just throwing it out the window. When I was a child, I would think that is the perfect way to get a girlfriend, that sort of skill set. A kid who solves a Rubik's Cube while doing keepy uppies is clearly going to be some kind of superhero one day, so I'm going to have to award this one a hit. If you thought that hobby video finally proved that men can actually multitask, wait till you see this next clip. Multitasking is an illusion. We cannot multitask. We can fool ourselves into thinking that we are multitasking um, with tasks that we're very practised at. Driving's a really good example of that. You feel like you can just drive and chat away and uh, you're doing two things at exactly the same time. This golfing supremo proves that just when you think you've mastered your craft, you can suddenly find yourself in uncharted waters. 
it feels like this guy has bought all these things on eBay and a few days earlier, his wife's been saying, what do you buy these for? You never use them. To do this well, you will need to have really good balance and really good hand-eye coordination. But for those of you who don't have either of those, you can practise them. I like the idea of um, surfing, but I, I'll probably be awful at it. Pretty quite buoyant, though. This guy has found a way to maximise his free time, performing two sports simultaneously. A hit! Golf is one of the most popular hobbies in the world, so we thought it only fair to include more than one hack to help you get the most out of this old-school pastime. <laughs> Combining those two famous poolside activities, golf and table tennis, this pair has scored a hole-in-one on holiday entertainment. If you look deep into the inflatable flamingo's eyes, you can see it. You can see the pain. You can see it thinking, I've been watching these idiots try doing this for the last six hours. These guys have nailed that poor holiday boredom problem with a great new hobby, a hit. How many people have actually ever used a leaf blower for blowing leaves? Exactly, none. So this lady has found an even better use for it, and I think this might now be my favourite hobby. So it's my day off today, so I thought I'd have some fun with this. Let's see how this turns out. What is it they say about idle hands being the devil's workshop? Say hello to my little friend. <laughs> I guess pranking is a hobby, and in this case, she has nailed it. By teaming up a giant loo roll with a leaf blower, this lady's not only found another use for a toilet roll, but an actual use for a leaf blower. Her boyfriend seems very unamused by it. I don't think they're very well matched. She needs someone who's a bit more light-hearted. <laughs> bye, bye. Do I clean all that up? Love you. This hobby trailblazer lady is the hero the internet needs right now. Although her boyfriend might not agree. A huge hit. <laughs> Leaf blower clips are like buses. You wait for your entire life for one to turn up, then two come along at the same time. But this leaf blower hack uses an ancient hobby and is ever so slightly more sporting than the previous one. Setting up a huge pool table in your office takes balls. And here they are. It's the precise engineering that's going into something so frivolous. It's just, that's how engineers do it. It's brilliant. I thought it would be quite good for playing chess, but I tried it and it just... just it was hard to tell who won. These guys won't even let work get in the way in pursuit of their favourite hobby. Whatever they're getting paid, it's probably too much. But risking it all to practice their favourite pastime is definitely a hack hit. Over to Hack HQ. The countdown is over and the fuses are lit. There's no cannon too big, no dynamite too strong, and no bridge we won't cross. Mike, with his trusty guinea pig Stephen, will put any hack to the ultimate test. Debunk, demystify and deconstruct so that you don't have to. Earlier, Mike pimped a humble paintable gun into a super-sized cannon. But no weapon modification is complete without testing it out in the field. If only Mike somehow had access to a human willing to let himself be shot repeatedly with paint. A human guinea pig, if you will. Wonder where we'll find one of those. Welcome to my hobbies hack. Oh, yes, your highly fortified fortress. What have you got in there, then? Well, I've got a few bits and pieces. A gun, obviously the cannon. Oh, yes, the cannon. I remember the cannon. And I've built this beautiful obstacle course for you to get through. You've got to grab your flag and run back without being hit. OK. But as we're out here, we may as well give it a test run. Uh, can I put my mask on first? No, oh. I don't think there's any need to. I'm not going to shoot you just yet. That would be, that'd be completely unfair on the game, wouldn't it? Wow. Okay. <laughs> um, so where's my gun? Your gun's down the other end. Right. So get your mask on. Right. Head on down there and, uh, of course, beware of those uh, little surprises along the way. Oh, brilliant. What Stephen doesn't know is that by little surprises, Mike actually means explosive paint grenades. Five, four, three, two, one. Go for it. Mike, you can't show us a huge multi-barrel paint cannon and then not fire it. Don't tease us. Bloody safety. Oh. 
Right, I'll get you quite a bit up to reach there behind that tree in your fortress with all your weapons. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Here's for all the stuff you've done. You're gonna have to make some kind of move now. Ah, Mike has only gone and set off all his booby traps. Poor Stephen. <laughs> ah. Oh, and again, Stephen's going to be very sore after this. forgot. Had in time. That had to hurt. Yes! Yes, I made it back without being hit. Well, maybe once or twice, but nonetheless, I think I'm the winner. Oh dear, I've been hit quite badly. Might have got you once. OK, I won, yes? Well, technically, you got your flag back home. Yeah, but, I mean, you know, you didn't really... Well, you did sort of get me, I didn't you? I shot you about 100 times. Is that a lot of times? <laughs> is that a lot of times? I'm not 100% sure. The thing is, the reason why it hit me, I think, partly down to technology and partly down to the fact that you did it at point-blank range. Well, you know, advantages. No, but I still think I won, because right at the beginning, I got you crack in the middle of the forehead, you see, which would have made for a very short game, but one where I would have won nonetheless. But Barely nonetheless, a flesh wound. Can I point out as well, actually, your hidden surprises were a little bit more hardcore than I thought. A little bit. They made a bit of a bang, didn't they? So I thought you'd have an extra gun or something. What was it? These were my little booby traps. So inside, I put a maroon. Right. A little bit of explosive charge at the bottom and then packed it full of paintballs. I placed them in strategic areas so that when I saw you, press the button, bang, got you right in the back. Well, you must have felt great about that. And I then certainly did. smoke screens smoke. as well. Yeah, well, I tried to cover you, your flag with smoke, but um, obviously it didn't work too well, did it? No, because I managed to get the flag. So um, yeah, well, you shot me a few times. We're going to call that a draw? I covered you in paint. Draw? No. All oh, right, then, my win. Either way, as hobby hacks go, that was epic. So there you have it, an ultimate guide on how to make your hobbies even more exciting, crazy and enjoyable than ever. Join us next time when we'll be hacking even more everyday objects and pursuits to give you another set of amazing tips.